the second uh, law that we have that governs thermal radiation coming from a source at some temperature in Kelvin T is the Stefan-Boltzmann law. And the Stefan-Boltzmann law relates what's called the flux uh, to the temperature that a surface is at. Uh, so the relationship is the flux is a constant of nature, Stefan-Boltzmann constant, so lowercase sigma times temperature to the fourth power. So my little cursive F thing is the flux, which is the power per square meter or energy per unit area per unit time. So it's the flux in you could think of it as a unit of power, a watt per square meter of surface, or joule per second per square meter of surface, because a watt is a joule per second. And our constant sigma, so the lowercase sigma is 5.7 times 10 to the minus 8. So this has some units that get a little wonky. It is in watts per meter squared and per Kelvin to the fourth power. And just as with Wien's law, we're only going to be dealing with temperatures in the Kelvin temperature scale. So everything is measured relative to absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin. So all temperatures are positive. All right, so let's do an example for Earth. What is the flux for planet Earth? as it is radiating to cool off. So let's take average temperature for the surface of Earth, 290 Kelvin. And just straightforward, calculate what the flux is. Sigma T to the fourth. And the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, sigma 5.7, times 10 to the minus 8 watt per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth and 290 Kelvin to the fourth power and that will give us a flux in watts per square meter because Kelvin to the fourth there will cancel out from Kelvin when I raise it to the fourth power. And that works out to be a flux of 400 watts per square meter. So every square meter of Earth's surface uh, on average is radiating 400 watts of power um, out is just coming from what our average surface temperature is. Right. The other way we can use the Stefan-Boltzmann law is to take a flux and use that to infer what the temperature of a surface is. And when you do that, that's called an effective temperature. The temperature the surface would have if it were radiating as a black, black body. All right, so for this, uh, for the example, I want to compute what the surface of the sun, uh, what its temperature is. And we're going to start from something we can measure here on Earth, flux of sunlight at Earth is 1360 
watts per square meter. So we'll call that the flux at Earth. So every square meter of Earth's surface is getting 1,360 watts, so 1,360 joules every second, so quite a bit of energy. So that is the flux here at Earth. Uh, to calculate the temperature of the surface of the sun, we need to know the flux of sunlight at the surface of the sun. So we're going to have to transform this uh, to compute flux of sunlight at the sun. So that's going to be this flux, the flux we measure here at Earth, 1.36 times 10 to the 3 watts per square meter. And then I'm going to multiply by the surface area of a sphere whose radius is one astronomical unit. And then I'm going to divide by the surface area of a sphere whose radius is the radius of the sun. So that's going to take the flux from what we observe here at Earth after the light from the sun is spread out over a sphere equal to the radius of our orbit and scale it to be the flux passing through a sphere whose radius is the surface of the sun. So I'm going to have two factors here, a 4 pi and then 1.50 times 10 to the 11th meters squared. So that's the area of a sphere whose radius is our distance away from the sun. And then I need to divide by the surface area of a sphere that is the radius of the sun. So 6.96 times 10 to the 8th meter squared. And 4 pi is obviously cancel. 4 pi. And then meter, I'm going to cancel with meter. So the flux of sunlight at the sun. 6.32 times 10 to the 7th watts per square meter. And now we can apply the Stefan-Boltzmann law to solve for the temperature. So the effective temperature of the surface of the sun is going to be the flux at the surface of the sun divided by the Stefan-Boltzmann constant sigma to the fourth root. Yes, 6.32 times 10 to the seventh watts per square meter over the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, 5.7 times 10 to the minus eight watt over meter squared Kelvin to the fourth. That's all the fourth root. So watt cancels watt, meter squared cancels meter squared, so I'll have a one over Kelvin to the fourth that I take the fourth root of. So it's going to give me a temperature in Kelvin. We do that. We have 5,770 Kelvin, um, but I only have two decimals significance in sigma, so probably a better answer for the effective temperature for the surface of the sun would be 5,800 Kelvin, which that's where the number in your textbook is coming from.
is coming from knowing the size of Earth's orbit, the size of the Sun, and the same unit of measure, and measuring how much sunlight is reaching us here on Earth. That allows us to calculate the effective temperature for the photosphere of the Sun.